Stroke is more than just a blocked blood vessel or a bleed in the brain. What really happens inside the brain during those crucial minutes? Why do some neurons die immediately while others hang in a fragile balance of life and death? In this video, we'll dive deep into the pathophysiological cascade that follows a stroke, including excitotoxicity, oxidative stress, and the concept of the ischemic penumbra. Let's understand what actually kills the neurons and what gives us the opportunity to save them. When a stroke occurs, either due to a clot, ischemic, or a bleed, the blood supply to a region of the brain is interrupted. Within minutes, the infarct zone experiences a drastic drop in oxygen and glucose. Without oxygen, neurons can't produce ATP through aerobic metabolism. As a result, the energy pumps, especially the sodium-potassium ATPase pump, begin to fail. This failure leads to ionic imbalance. The sodium and calcium ions rush into the cell and water follows, causing cytotoxic edema. This is the beginning of cell death, but it gets worse. As the cells lose control over their environment, another dangerous event begins, excitotoxicity. Damaged neurons start releasing massive amounts of glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter. Under normal conditions, glutamate is tightly regulated, but during a stroke, it floods the synaptic cleft. This excess glutamate overstimulates NMDA and AMPA receptors, allowing an uncontrolled influx of calcium ions into neighboring neurons. This calcium overload activates a series of destructive enzymes, proteases, lipases, and endonucleases, leading to the breakdown of proteins, fats, and even DNA. Excitotoxicity is a neuron's death by overexcitation, a vicious cycle triggered by energy failure. The third event happening in this cascade is the oxidative and nitrosative stress. As calcium floods into the cell and mitochondria struggle, they start producing harmful byproducts, reactive oxygen species also called ROS. These ROS begin to damage everything the cell membrane, DNA, enzymes, leading to oxidative stress. Alongside ROS, nitric oxide NO levels rise abnormally. Combined with superoxide, it forms peroxynitrite, a highly destructive compound. The cell undergoes a biochemical storm of free radicals that destroys its own machinery. And the last event that is crucial and can be saved is the ischemic penumbra. Surrounding the infarct core is a fascinating region. The ischemic penumbra. Here, blood flow is reduced but not completely absent. Neurons are struggling but not yet dead. They are electrically silent but structurally intact. Meaning, if we can restore perfusion early, these cells can survive and recover. The goal of early stroke treatment like thrombolysis or mechanical thrombectomy is to save the penumbra before it joins the infarct. So why should physiotherapists, doctors, and students care about this? Because understanding this cascade explains why time is brain, why stroke rehab should start as early as possible while the brain is still plastic and recovering from biochemical injury. It also helps explain why spasticity or cognitive decline may develop and why some stroke patients have a rapid deterioration in hours after the initial event due to expansion of the penumbra.